everybody. Welcome to Tadaima, a Terrace House podcast, your weekly companion to your favorite show on Netflix. I'm Robert Scarpanito, and I'm joined here by Daily Wilhelm. Konbanwa. Jack Zepeda. <clears throat> Boom shakalaka. And Colin Sperling. Hey, guys. No gaming videos this week. Thanks. Thanks, Colin. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so if you if you haven't been watching, that's Jack Black, right? Jack Black Jablinski videos. Jablinski Games. Mm-hmm. And you've Jablinski. been Jablinski Games. He's and famous for being a YouTuber listening. and nothing else. And nothing else. He's he's never did Jack Black. At never heard of him. Listen, no. but, small. Can I can I just throw in a small anecdote? Since oh you no. mentioned Jack Black. Oh god. So it came out. So he did a he did he broke down he broke down all of his best roles for Vanity Fair. And one of them he noted was Shallow Hell as being one of his favorite movies to do. And yes. it was recently with Gwyneth Paltrow. She said that uh, actually Shallow Hell, I'm really embarrassed that I did that movie. Like, what fuck that a movie. betrayal. I like that movie. I, know. Really I was so upset. Too. I was like, you, you're totally hurting Jack Black's feelings. Damn. But anyway, <laughs> poor is, Jack. Please, so daily. I've never heard of that movie. Oh. But I have heard of the contest that we're running that oh. y'all should totally <laughs> enter into if you haven't already because it's super easy to do. You could win a pair of AirPod Pros or an Amazon gift card of equivalent value. We're we're giving out stuff here. Like what yes. what more do you want from us? Take and on, what yeah. we want yeah. from you. Hold on. Hmm? You can use that Amazon gift card to buy Shallow Hal daily. <gasps> you could. Oh. And know what I'm missing out on apparently. Buy it 20 but, times. But in order to to get the chance to get these totally free things that we'll give to you, all you have to do is write a written review on Apple Podcasts and then let us know that you did that. Like, just send us your username or we'll contact you through your username so that we can give you the free thing. Um, like our boy, Name Boy, who's in the running from Canada. Uh, Name boy, down, boy wrote Name Boy wrote a great review saying an amazing podcast to listen to waking up every morning becomes easier when I listen to these wonderful four. I'm so oh grateful gosh. for this podcast too, since they refresh my Terrace house memory because damn the waiting period takes too long. Ha ha. Dude. <laughs> <name> <laughs> boy, thank you so much. Thank you for that review and Canada. I had no idea you felt this way. Recently, I'm very ashamed to say this, but just about a week ago or so, I find out that we have all these other international reviews from all these other countries, and Apple makes it really hard for us to see that in the States. So I have spent time catching up here with what you guys are leaving. And damn, Canada, y'all are nice. Y'all are nice. You look good. You're loyal. It's, 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 you're well-educated. You're smart. I love Canada. You're reading Can- into these reviews a lot to glimpse all that. <laughs> Not that Listen. I'm disparaging Canadians. I'm just Doesn't saying. Come you- from, it just comes from what I know of Canada. I mean, it's a great country. And they left Listen. some awesome reviews. And, and so did a lot of other countries, too. You guys are too much. It's awesome. Canadians are the sweetest, like, man. I like your free health care. Same. I wish we had that in America. Yeah. Yeah, I, I meet a lot of Canadians and Australians, oddly enough. And every single person I meet for, from both of those places are really nice people. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, if you leave us a written review, let us know your name on Apple Podcasts. You are in the running for AirPod Pros or an Amazon gift card of equal value. But if you're thinking about it, do not sit on it. Make it happen. Just go go on your computer, on your phone right now and make it happen. Because, Jack, what do you Because the that, deadline that is now officially March 15th to get in on this March 15th, guys. It's a Sunday. Do not wait. The time is coming to leave that review and get your name in for the running yes do it the time is up your time is now 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 you can't see me to to be clear if you do still want to be nice and leave us a review after march 15th you're legally allowed like if you're listening to this in the future and catching up (laughs) on our all of our old shows you you know that's you're welcome to as well just like legally allowed like we're not gonna sue you for leaving (laughs) us a nice review or you can be totally honest if you hate us we get it (laughs) So, so, so why it go, go, goes to my lawyer's office? So why exactly are you suing these people? They left us a nice review. Yeah, oh, they said okay. we were great. It's a verbally binding one-way contract that we have forced upon them. <laughs> yeah, like, name boy, you'll be people. hearing from my lawyer. <laughs> name boy. No, but really, name boy, we'd love the review. Thank you so much, and for everyone else who has left a review as well from all around the world. Thank you. Yes, it helps. Y'all us. Are too and sweet. It, it makes us feel so special. I'm glad I could finally read them after over a year. <laughs> hey, that's that's Tim Cook's fault, not yes. us. Damn it. 
Um, and if you want to uh, hear some updates on the Terrace House Deathmatch Panic, uh, we've got updates for that at the end of this episode. So stick around. Uh, we've finished our first round and some interesting developments have happened that we can't wait to talk about. But for now, let's do what we do best, and let's talk about Terrace House. We are discussing episode 23 of Tokyo 2019-2020 this week. Friendship between men and women. Or as I like to call it, the Hana Ryo special. Did somebody throw some cayenne pepper at this episode? Because this is a spicy one, y'all. This is a spicy episode. Dude, this episode, it... It ends in, like, I didn't expect to walk away from any Terrace House episode feeling like I'm watching a spy thriller movie. Uh, but that's what this episode gave me. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a dead body. There we'll was a dead body. There, but the cliffhanger for this one was fucking one for the ages. I, I still don't know what happened yet. I need to go watch it. And it scares me for, like, if this is the cliffhanger that we're walking into, what's it going to be like for 24? Seriously. We'll find out Fuck. next week. There, there's actually a bomb in the house. Someone planted a bomb. Oh, oh stop! No. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> That's what Hana was calling about. There's yeah. a bomb in the house. <laughs> yeah, but let's let's start at the start. Um, the panelists all kind of question uh, Emika's kind of interactions with Ryo right there. A little uh, wondering how why is she being so flirty? And I think we get a little bit more of that in this episode. Um, but when we cut to the house proper, we are in the girls' room. Uh, where Hanukkah's just kind of recounting her, her date with Pepe. She's excited about how Pepe and her are going on a cocktail uh, bar date that's going to be fancy. Fancy date. A fancy schmancy date. Maybe they go to 12. Period. Tw yeah. 12 lowercase period. Yeah, we'll see. It, it's, the, this scene's, uh, I get, it's how, a lot of Haruka like contemplating how she feels and I just don't, I don't know how to read her. Like it doesn't feel like she's very sure about the whole situation you know what's interesting here is what she doesn't say she doesn't tell the girls in the scene that she's got one foot out the door already i thought that was pretty interesting. no she's yeah. withholding oh. that i mean she unless told she told them this episode off screen maybe uh you think i would really well, hope that they would keep that in oh yeah well i would yeah. hope so yeah i mean that's pretty yeah. that's pretty detrimental to our viewing pleasure i yeah. i think so pepe pepe is the only one who knows that she's leaving he hasn't spilled yeah. the beans either interesting it's true He's too busy drawing. That's like yeah. his whole episode. Oh this my week gosh! Is just drawing. Oh, maybe that's gonna help his art. Maybe in his uh, story now, the girl's leaving. Mm. Oh dang! She's putting and, all her clothes back that's... on and she's walking out the door. So it's the same theory as to like Masao. Like his his bass playing improved when his heart was broken, and so shall wow. Pepe's art improve when his heart is inevitably broken. Wow. Yeah, for some yeah. reason, the art really improves after chapter eight. Can't tell you why. I don't yeah. know. Just incredibly, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> detailed, and it got really sad, but it was really good. That's a really Inyo... tragic pattern, though. Like, heartbreak breeds uh, better art. It sounds like Inio Asano got into Pepe's head. Like, the best stories are the ones with heartbreak. He so get your heart broken. Yeah. Um, in this scene, we also get a little, uh, the beginning, I guess, of a little bit of a fight maybe between Hana and uh, Emika where Hana is telling them, Oh yeah. Hey, Ryo and I, we've kind of maybe solidified plans for like a date soon. And then I like, that's cool. I stayed up really late last <laughs> night watching, uh, watching Terrace house with Ryo on his laptop, which definitely means they snugged up a little bit. We were mm -hmm. close together and we stayed up really late. Ooh, it was like that <laughs> kind of like back it and was, forth. Yeah. It was such like a one up, like like oh, oh you're absolutely going out, like maybe to eat or something. Well, we're going to fuck in the playroom because <laughs> we're practically already there. Because that's what's happened. Uh, there's been some canoodling as the result of watching something cuddled up close in the playroom. We saw it in O N D. Maybe we'll see it here. Wow, y'all, yeah. conspiracy theory time. Oh no, conspiracy theory. I know it's yeah. early. I know it's early. Okay. It's never but, too early for a conspiracy theory. So what if episode 24, the reason why people are seem to be so excited about it in the Terrace House community is that Rio has been has been actually playing dumb on camera and he is like low key hooking up with both of them with everyone with, Ev with Pepe. even Pepe, <laughs> even Pepe, <laughs> at Dang. least at least maybe with Emmy. I mean, I, mm. Wow, we'll see. Uh, we will find out. Curveball. 
curveball, yeah. he actually admits his feelings for Ruka. Oh, he <laughs> likes to take a little bit of a fatherly big brother role in his that, relationships. So that's why he, we're on the wrong side of this. That's why he's so concerned with, with the time that uh, uh, Emika and Ruka are spending together. It's not for Emika. It's for the affections of young Ruka. Ah, that's what you're saying. Maybe that's why Ru Ruka only gets like three lines this whole episode because they're afraid that Ruka's going to blow it. Oh, okay. man. You know, and to be He's fair, just the we, house boy now. <laughs> to be house fair, boy. Rio does say that Ruka looks really handsome in this episode. So you we want do Ruka's know he thinks Ruka is attractive. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry I don't have Ruka's pretty face. Wow. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> Man, well, bottom line is what we are seeing here and hearing is that they are jousting now. Like Robert said, this is starting. This is the early phases here, and it only intensifies as this entire episode goes forward. Right. And this kind of leads into Hana making, I think, her first real jab at love, at romance, where mm. it's the next morning at 7 a.m. Ryo complains about the mess in the kitchen because it's always messy, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Hana comes down wearing a Nicki Minaj shirt and they have their little morning herbal tea ritual where Hana, <laughs> all Hana does is say like, Kono, right? Like, if I... Win and then match. Rio finishes. Win your match? Yep. Yeah. He knew, he knew what she was going to say. First oh, of all, yeah. small small detail, but the fact that she's wearing a Nicki Minaj shirt for some reason clicked in my head that like, wow, I think she gets a lot of inspiration for her look from Nicki Minaj. <laughs> the, the cyber goth look? <laughs> Nicki Minaj not, cyber goth? Not the, the cyber, braid. I mean the, early, the braid. Early the, 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 Nicki Minaj, though. Yeah, yeah like cyber like goth. pink hair. Like she's got she's got darker, like slightly darker skin. Made sense lipstick. with the braids. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She just got a little bit of a Nicki Minaj look going. So maybe she hey. just draws inspiration from her. It's just something yeah. that kind of clicked in my head when I saw her wearing that shirt. That kitchen is dirty, though. And the fact that Hana just like straight up ignored the fact that he's just like, motherfucker, like all these dishes. <laughs> and I don't know. It's like we're just, we're just not going to acknowledge like how dirty this kitchen is. You expect her to drop her shit yeah. and fucking help clean? No, no. Her. But it was just like, I mean. Rio, Rio was like visibly frustrated. It just reminded me of Cowrie. What was one of the last things Cowrie said before she walked out the door? Don't forget to fucking take out the garbage, you fucking heathens. It's one of the last things she said. <laughs> yes. I'll just get the exact point. She just a, yeah, she just took it cleaning up after people. And it's just like kind of surprising that even having cameras and being on an international TV show cannot motivate someone enough to maybe clean up their act for a period of some weeks and months. Yeah, I it mean, so Rio is like one of, one of the busier people in the house, too. And he's yeah. like... Stuck doing a lot of the He's housework, and it's like, what's the Where's Ruka? Ruka's not doing anything, dude. Hey, Ruka's known for being Spider Man, not for being the dishwasher. I think so. there should be a system, guys, and I don't know if maybe you guys do this as roommates, but I think there should be a system like whoever cooks, whoever gets to eat that food should clean, and vice versa. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Robert, Robert and I try to execute the system. I mean, I'm kind of lazy sometimes. <laughs> That's very true. It's extremely yeah. true. And I'm, I'm savagely putting you on blast. No, but uh, <laughs> Damn. hold on. So wait, Jack, with your system, are you saying someone cooks but doesn't eat? Like they cook it for the other person to eat? If that and were to happen, it... I guess. And if you're cooking for yourself, then you're stuck cleaning up for yourself. But it would be ostensibly a smaller mess because you're just cooking for one. But if you're cooking for the group, the group should pitch in and, and clean up. I mean, I feel like the most common situation back in OND when everyone was like fastidiously polite, I felt as compared to this season anyway, Good it was word. always like, uh, thank you. Um, someone would cook and then afterward it'd be like, I'm going to do the dishes. No, I'm going to do the dishes. Hold on. No, let me. You, you already cooked. I'm going to do the dishes. Like, that is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Yui would do everyone's laundry. That's the problem. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. Get fucking Yui, Yui back. <laughs> Yui, get your fucking shady ass back in the house. <laughs> <laughs> She'd make lists for everyone again, though. To be fair, yeah. dude, can you imagine I got a list the, oh, of questions. That'd be a fun game. Like we should go down the roster of the current housemates, and what would the list say that Yui would make for them? <laughs> can you imagine the one for Ruka? Oh my god, that sounds oh, like no. a bonus Why? episode idea. Yes. Do you want to be Spider Man? <laughs> <laughs> Have you thought about the fact that he's a fake Marvel character in Make Believe Land? The, the prosecution of Spider Man. The, the prosecution <laughs> of Peter Parker. <laughs> Yo, Yui and Yuki Burns from uh, BGITC put them together prosecuting and, and forcing Ruka to defend his dreams. Damn, drama. Nobody Bless. asks, why is Spider Man? And then the big guns come in. It's tap. <laughs> oh, shit. oh no! Tap comes in. Just tap, comes tap dance all tap, over his dream. Yeah, dude. Da, da. <laughs> we just say. <said, yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> have to have guest stars. So I don't know. Your your dream doesn't really make any sense to me, yeah, man. You did a lot of talking, and I didn't fucking hear nothing. <laughs> or maybe be like, I've heard all of it, and it's stupid. Wow. <laughs> Bottom that's line, to bring us back full circle, the dishes are dirty, and we have the Olympic hopeful that's cleaning up after everybody. There's problems. Right. And to be fair, I don't want to say Hana needs to pay attention to that either, because this is a big day for her, right? Sure. She has to go through the shit tro like we do, and then after the shit tro, <laughs> it's her big day. It's her final match. It's like they, the championship wrestling match. They just Wait, force them saying... to listen to that song once a day living there. <laughs> I honestly, in my head, in my head, it seems more like, uh, you know how during like college and NFL football games, they have to take a commercial time out. That's mm-hmm. what it is. They have to take a com- like a commercial time out for the shit row. And the house like, that. everybody stand still. Nobody move. <laughs> okay, go. Just what I'm, let me know. What I'm proposing <laughs> is they record the intro live every week where they have to recreate those scenes. Dude, they had oh, churches. Like everyone's doing that. their own things. Like, they had churches yeah. actually record the, that song, or Graves, in the house. But if that fucking emo band showed up, I would just slam the door right in their face like, get the fuck out of here. It's like, yeah, we're good, actually. Yeah, yeah we're not letting you <laughs> Lock in. the door. <laughs> Spider Man lives here. <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. Uh, but we're in Korakuen Hall in Sudobashi, where it's the five-star Grand Prix 2019. It's the ultimate, the final fight between Hana and Konami, the Bam. company. The small wave. Mm-hmm, yes. The little wave. Uh, Metal Gear comes out. It's pretty cool. Uh, and then there's there's a whip involved because of Castlevania. <laughs> no. Oh, None of nope. this is true. Oh. <sighs> okay. None of this happened. <laughs> but that's a, fan- that's a fancy name. And man, they are so brutal. And I kind of had a feeling like it's just strange for me seeing wrestling. I know we've touched this before, but like it's such a quiet arena, even in the middle of the match. And then the girls are screaming at the top of their lungs. It's mm. just like an awkward environment, I guess. And the only people really cheering very loud are the housemates, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, Which I, we were I, warned of. It, mm-hmm. it does feel like that. Like the screaming is almost made me uncomfortable because it sounded like, man, th- it's just like the I'm getting tortured alive type screaming. Like, yeah, it's like it, screaming it at the top sl- of your lungs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just so quiet of like, are we just watching someone getting murdered? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty brutal. This one, like it was definitely like worth it when she prevailed in the end. They they built up that drama of like she was on the rope. She was getting her hair pulled, she was getting kicked, she was getting dropped, and then she came out victorious. It was, um, in terms of, like, showmanship, like, good show, good stuff. Yeah. Good, good like, show, I even, chap. I even want to say, like, that match opens up pretty dirty. As a wrestling expert of the podcast, uh, uh, yes. in Wrestle. the middle of Hana's, like, intro, her entrance, because, you know, every every wrestler has a little entrance where they do the poses and stuff, you know, like, Stone Cold cracks some beers and gets drunk before a fight, that whole thing. It's in the middle of Hana's intro that Konami just comes in and fucking drop kicks her knee. She's yeah. like, let's fucking go. Let's fight. Please just right? ignore the fact that um, Hana took extra long and slow to get in the ropes there to wait for her to get kicked. But Oh, that's common. No, 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 hold on. That, that's a common entrance thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to slow. Serious. Please hurry up and kick me. <laughs> Please yeah. hurry up and kick me. I'm, one of my favorite things is when we cut to Yo watching the show and he is so he looks so genuinely and unironically invested in what's going on. Oh yeah. And he's yeah. just he's like <laughs> he looks genuinely worried for Hana's well being. He's like, he's like, Hana, let's go, let's go. I mean, the thing about it is, even though you know it is scripted entertainment, she still is jumping from the top turnbuckle, kicking a chick, and then landing on her back with like no padding and minimal springs. Like she's taking some big bumps, you know, and she has oh, yeah. the bruises to prove it too. So it still is kind of brutal to watch, especially with all that screaming we're talking about. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was, I, I've heard The Rock say, like, if you're not constantly in some sort of physical pain, you're not wrestling. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you're not doing it right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in the end, Hana comes out victorious. She wins by submission. Yeah. Which is fantastic. She does, like, a weird kind of inverted arm bar thing. I don't really know what that move would be called. Um, I don't know. But, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, it's a, what's funny is the ref, like when the chick quits and like verbally taps out, right, and gives Hana the win, the ref is supposed to, if he's looking out for the safety of the wrestlers, is supposed to break him up, but he like runs away and tells them to ring the bell first and then comes back and saves her. Mm. It just made me well, laugh. You, yeah, you've got to tell the, the bell because the bell is like the ultimate, like the match is over. Stop fighting. You know? 
Um, but yeah, she Bring wins. Out she the gets the crown. Yeah, yes. she gets the crown. She gets the trophy. She gets a little cape that she doesn't really put on. Just kind of falls, falls off, off of her. Turns into a skirt kind so, of thing. <laughs> like she was like you know celebratory arms up. She wasn't really trying to hold up the cape in that moment. But everyone was very. Like the the federation president or whatever, and like the ref, they were like, "You need to wear the cape. We <laughs> need the on. cape." <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of pomp and circumstance there, and it's like, can you let a sister catch her breath? She's like leaning on the ropes, like, uh, uh, and then they come up with the cape, and it like a, like a uh, uh, Yama said, it never really gets on her, never finds yeah. her, <laughs> never uh, finds her. And then from that high energy wrestling match, we go straight to perhaps one of the more tense scenes I've seen in Terrace House history, and also one of the longest scenes. Like this one, just kind of goes and goes, right? It does. We are. And it's here good for... from beginning to end too. Yes. We're here for like what a good ten minutes. It feels like probably it's a long. That. It's a long clip, but a lot happens here. A lot happens. Mm. Yeah. So let's let's set it up a bit. So right now it's Emmy and Hana. They're chilling on the couch, and Hana's helping Emmy take out her uh, synthetic braids. Um, and then Pepe is working on manga in the kitchen. Uh, and this is where Ryo comes in. He says "Tadaima," and Tadaima. then he looks at Pepe and does like the capiche, like the Italian hand thing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the, like, a funny relationship, man. Yeah, it's like cupping a little pumpkin seed with all of your fingers, kind of vibe. Tadaima. <laughs> Says tada ima to Pepe. It's great. Um, <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, uh, and then he comes and sits down, and he helps. Uh, he helps take the hair extensions out. But of course, he's never done this before, so he's a little bit rough. He's kind of pulling hairs out a little bit, right? Yeah. And yeah, Jack, go ahead. Short commentary on the length or lack thereof of Rio's shorts. What are your thoughts on these? They're like mid thigh. I'm just like, man, they're like a solid five six inches above the knee. Personally, I'm just like, hey, if you got the thighs, I guess you want to show it. But he's just always got these really short shorts on. Didn't know if anyone else knows or it's just me. I've, I've seen that come back in style recently. Yeah. I've seen it around campus. I've seen it in gyms. Like, it's it's cool to wear short shorts for men again. Wow. It's Wait, are they, are they like track shorts? I, I don't know why. I'm I mean, I'm sure there's some sort of basketball, you know, workout short. It's just like I remember... You know, probably 10 years ago, so we're like, you make fun of people wearing short shorts, hot pants like that. But I guess it's back it's, in. Yeah, it's got an oh, American yeah. flag on it, so you probably got it in America. But mm. for, for length of shorts, I've only got one word. All he needs to he needs to get a pair that has like the words on the butt. Mm, juicy. He, he could, <laughs> yeah, he could oh have God. like Olympic star or juicy. Juicy would work, too. <laughs> I love that we went different directions for that. All right. Totally different directions. Oh, we we checked off objectifying Rio. He's okay, we objectified Rio. So. He's pulling out her braids, and then he's like, get your head over here, and he does the head tug. And get this is like here. a little better version than the Shohei Santa head tug. Mm. Um, and it was kind of sexy. I guess the girls uh, thought it was hot when he did that. It's oh, yeah. Doki Doki. I yeah. mean, it makes your heart flutter, right? Um, while, while Ryo is working on one side of Hana's hair, uh, Hana starts kind of dropping these hints about like, oh, where's Ruka? Oh, is he asleep over there? Oh yeah. Weren't you, uh, weren't you up late watching rom-coms with him before, Amika? Oh, uh, weren't you two sleeping together in the, in the living room? Whew, man, the joust didn't come no. back. I yeah. mean, <sighs> he Shots fell fired. asleep and then maybe I fell asleep. I don't know. I was asleep first and then he, he... She doth protest too much. It's like, mm -hmm. just don't. She's making it into a bigger deal than it has to be. Like, obviously, Hana's trying to like nudge that way so that she can be like, oh, you know, Emika and Ruka are spoken for. Who's going to be the next couple? Mm. Darting looks at Ryo, you know? But because Emika's like, no, not at all, it makes it even more sus to me. Yeah, I tend to take Hadaka's side here. I mean, they have that conversation later in the episode, but that perhaps Hana didn't really necessarily have malicious intentions. Yes, it is true that it would be convenient if she had Ryo all to herself, but she's basing her conversation, at least in, in my eyes here, uh, based on the conversation the three girls had before, where Emika so much said that she's interested in Ruka, you know, and then her actions mm. kind of back that up as well, too. So I think in Hana's head, she kind of looks at it as very convenient that they're, the girls are friends, they're friendly together, and they don't like the same guy. 
necessarily. Mm-hmm. She might be thinking that now they are starting to like the same guy. And so that's where I think this is really going to get stirred up here. But I think at this point on the couch, Hannah's not necessarily trying to be too malicious until maybe she starts bringing up the rom-coms and then drawing those correlations that, you know, there's a lot of um, actions being taken on the part of Emika and Ruka that are maybe suggesting they're more than friends. That's fair. Because that would be such a power move to have some your your hair in someone else's hands and you're like purposely needling them. So maybe she, you're right. She just was thinking about this more as like a bonding moment mm. than a like setting out territorial lines. Yeah, moment. yeah. Like back off, back off. Yeah, I don't think it got there yet, and maybe it will, and it probably will actually. My my main concern with this scene is, I guess Hana's defense here, because uh, it either makes her look bad or ruka look bad right it makes her look bad in that she is like daily said protesting too much it's very suspicious how much she's denying like oh ruka and i have co-slept right but if what she's saying is the truth then what goes through ruka's brain where he's like oh uh emika's asleep on the couch i was like a good place to kind of bunk up myself (laughs) just to kind (laughs) of i'll just plop right here and start taking a nap like that's weird man (laughs) You know, unless like you're like there's something there, but to just be yeah. like, oh, my roommate is sleeping on the couch. Let me just kind of nuz- nuzzle up right on in there and just kind of do the same. Yeah, I, I knew growing up, I knew one of these girls that slept in the same bed as all her guy friends at the same time and wanted everyone to not question it at all. And then she was just one of those annoying people that Yama was talking about, just pretending it's not a thing at all. And so I'm coming at it from that lens, you know, and so it's it just seeing this kind of behavior, even though Emika might just be like you said, you know, um, a sensual person. That's just her, who she is. OK, maybe. But just based on my life experience, I get annoyed at this kind of thing, you know, um, and she would always like, yeah, that, that's all I'm going to divulge about that person. But she would do other shit, too, I guess. I'll say. I think I think Ruka might have a more of a hand in this than we let on. And I don't think. I think on his part, like he's doing it, not realizing what this means, or maybe to him, it's a little bit more innocent. Like we've seen from past actions with like between him and Rosako, for example, right? Where like they were, they were spending a lot of time together. They were in prox- close proximity to each other, and it turned out to like not be a big deal. Like they were just friends, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Let's let's take stock here. We know Ruka likes Emika. Mm-hmm. We know that. It's not just a friendship to him based on what the edits have showed us so far. Right. So mm-hmm. is that right of her if she doesn't feel that way about him? You know? Yeah. I my my biggest concern, I think, is just the the amount of consent there is there. Because I, I do think it's fine that you can just be friends and sleep together in the same room on the same couch or whatever, as long as there's that understanding between the two of you of like, yeah, I'm okay with this, you know? But if it's really just Ruka comes in later and decides this is a good place to roost, it's that's very questionable. questionable. Yeah. I think Emika's okay with it until fucking Ryo finds out about it. That's what I fucking think. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the moment <laughs> it goes too far for her. Otherwise, it'd just be like, yeah, we're friends. We, yeah, who cares? We, mm-hmm. You know, but but just so that we have the baseline here, when we say co-sleeping, are we saying like, there's cuddling going on or just like facing opposite ends of the couch like maybe yeah. feet touching yeah. or near each other or like because yeah. i i thought it was like oh they're watching a movie together and then she falls asleep and then ruka just decides yeah. not to get up and go to bed also and falls yeah. asleep but if they're spooning that's dangerously close to a tetris bang that's different that's, <laughs> that's a tetris different. bang that's a tetris bang yeah. territory <laughs> yeah that that's true i I don't know if that speaks to like dealings we've had with Ruka in the past, but when I was hearing about the situation, I took it as like, yeah, maybe they they probably are just sleeping on like opposite ends of the couch. But yeah, uh, we don't really have details as to like what Hana saw. If she was walking in on them and then they were cuddling or something like that, then that's quite a bit different. That's yeah. like I think Hana's a little bit more justified in My thought- calling me Amy out. My final thought on this is that it's okay if Emmy like I don't really villainize Emika that much here. If she's trying to figure out if she likes him or not, and maybe she thought she did, yeah. and that's why she said that in the room. And it's fine to change your mind. 
that's okay. But if she, and we all know that Ruka likes her, and she knows that Ruka likes her too. She saw the drawings. She saw the hearts and all that shit. Uh, so she knows it too. So, But if she continues to do this shit, and knowing in her heart she doesn't like him and he likes her, then I think that's where it crosses something for me. Like, okay, well, what are your true motives here? Mm. Well, I think we can dive more into this later because there's, trust me, there's there's more that happens, right, in this yeah. episode between oh, yeah. Hana Ba-da-ba. and Amika. So at this point in the scene, Hana's hair is finally synthetic free. She goes upstairs for a bit and now it's just Ryo and Emmy and they're talking and Ryo just kind of asks her about, hey, how's your future looking? You know, are you going to take that sabbatical? Oh, you still need to learn English. How's being a flight attendant? Very, you know, typical career driven stuff. And Emmy kind of starts to tear up a bit. Uh, you get the sense that she's frustrated. And my guess is it's like a lot of things all in one. It's the, oh, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Plus the, wow, Hana's being a real bitch right now to me kind of vibe. You know, it's like there's a lot, I think, that was that was hitting her all at once. Mm-hmm. That's that's at least the take I took. Yeah, which I don't think Hana was trying to be a bitch, though, too. You know, <laughs> and, and there is that suspicion that maybe she's summoning these tears to pull on heartstrings. Yeah, that's what the panel believes, right? Some of them. Or Yama. Yama yeah, I don't either. I, won- I wonder. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think they're genuine, especially because she she goes on to say, this is when Hana comes back into the room, right? Uh, Emmy says that it's more about how she's in this house with all of these aspiring, like, very career-driven people, you know? Mm-hmm. Pepe has his manga. Uh, Hana and Ryo are star athletes in their own right. How did good... She's already made it, I guess, because all she does is drive her Corvette and play golf. So, I mean, get money for her hobbies. Yeah. Yeah. And Ruka finally works at Marvel. He doesn't. (laughs) Um, So Uh, it's, you know, she's in this this high octane room and she feels like she needs to kick it into, you know, sixth gear. But she isn't able to or she isn't finding the motivation or something. hmm. Right. It's a good environment to be in. It's tough. I kind of. Yeah, it's a great environment to be in. I kind of sympathize with her in that it can be frustrating when all of these people that are like comfortable with where they're at currently are telling you, Hey, like, don't worry. Things will work out when you're like super worried about it. And like, maybe your self-esteem is down. Your confidence is down. I mean, like, you know, job, job hunting sucks. Figuring out what you want to do with your life can be a rough time, you know, cause you can, you can be really unsure of yourself insecure. I mean, there's a lot of different emotions and I, I mean, it's, it's in the scene. It's, it's very believable that she got, overwhelmed with everything that was happening yeah i don't think anyone in the room knows how to deal with it and i don't think she knows how to deal with it i think this is one of the most like awkward like i'm just gonna go moments yeah, in this house that i felt like i like was ooh, ooh, it was it was hard to watch absolutely like, hana was trying to be nice and say hey let's have a drink let's have and then Rio was like hey let's have a, some a yummy dinner or something like, that. like i'm gonna go to bed fuck this yeah i don't yeah. think that i don't think that's what she needed out of that situation yeah she later for consolement she later apologizes about that reaction because they were just trying to help but yeah 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 yeah. your heart was in the right place but i don't think that's what she wanted at the time what can you do in the moment you know yeah emotions are high in that room for multiple reasons it was a good scene though man it was long but it was chock full of shit i will say i think part of it might also be that when when you when your career goal is to be an athlete no matter what uh, sport it is, except golf, um, it's a very different mindset in that you're not like the skills you need to improve are literal muscles, right? Like muscles and coordination, like physical coordination, right? Reflexes, yeah. Whereas it, the skills that Emmy needs to do are more, not to say that sports oriented people don't think as much, but they're more of the mind, right? Like of how to be socially, you know, around uh, people while you're a flight attendant. What yeah. to do, what the process is, etc. Yeah. It's less mechanical, more cerebral. Yeah. Right. Yes. Exactly. What I mean, what Rio what Rio has to improve is much more tangible, really. I mean, like, yeah. hey, you need to improve your footwork. Like that's a thing you can tell yourself you can course correct and you can work toward it in a very like tangible way. Can I talk about yeah. my favorite part of this whole thing, which all this good shit we're already talking about? Hana goes to Rio and says, Hey, I won. He's like, that's I right. Would. What are we going <laughs> to do? And then where's my we prize? Fucking almost had a motherfucking shoe picking date. 
I was we like, did. Oh <laughs> my know. God. Is this soda real? style? So, so there are these shoes. Yeah, so I've been waiting to pick out these shoes and Rio's like, pump the brakes. Er, like, wait a second. Uh, I thought you'd want to relax. Let's go to the hot springs. Da, da, da. Let me take care of it. Don't worry. Yeah, that's a better idea. But the shoe picking date happened in my head and it was really mm. fucking funny. He salvaged the shit out of that conversation. <sighs> he, yeah. That, that was a move. That was, was, I believe, to be a romantic move because, like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna go to the hot springs with you guys. I'm only gonna go to the hot springs with someone that I'm interested in. Seems like a date thing. You wouldn't go with your it's friends. A date. Yeah. No, it's well, not a like. Yeah. I don't know, guys. Shoe picking is a very like personal. Like, well, I'd only like I need to be married right. to someone before I go shop shoe shopping with to them. Be, I think. Very intimate. To be it's fair very... though, we are Americans and in Japan I think bathing is a communal kind of thing. Like I think guys go to the hot springs all the time, actually in Japan. And yeah, I mean being in an onsen right. together with, with other people is a very common thing. Yeah, I think we're yeah, <laughs> but from our point of view, if we were visiting Japan, I don't think the four of us would go. I don't know, maybe. Well, also, though, you're right, it is more communal, but when you're doing a dual-gendered sharing a hot tub, hot spring thing, there is definitely a possibility of romantic intention there. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're, you're going to see more of that person than you have before. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, it, it was. Uh, I was excited for it, for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Buona notte. I learned how to say Buona goodnight. Buona notte. Yeah. Buona notte. <laughs> Buona notte? What, 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 I don't know, Italian. <laughs> All right, we'll riv- 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 Can we just get a clean <laughs> take on that one? <laughs> yeah. We butcher English. We sure shit butcher Japanese. Let's, but, let's find some more languages. To uh, but I, I will say, though, as a sidebar, uh, so this long is this last long scene we had with, with, all the hair picking and yada 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 happens, and then here's just Pepe off to the side. Yeah, Pepe's just, <laughs> he's just, he's just drawing while all this shit's going down. He's still showing off to Cowrie, guys. I can't get over that when Cowrie complained that he's just downstairs always doing his manga, showing I mean, off. To be fair, you know he's all this. I know he's busy. <laughs> he wants to hang out with people, but he's busy too. I think it's like yeah. a good uh, a good compromise. Like, while they're over there having a lot of tension going on, he's just jamming to churches in his headphones, <laughs> in his ears, you know, while he's drawing. Yeah, he's he, just having fun. He wants to feel like he's, uh, you know, living in Terrace House, actually. Fuck that he's got to draw for 16 hours straight every day, but, like, let, let him hang yeah. out. It's an office. Yeah. So you sit in your um, chair, Pepe. I'm for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. The panel is here. That's where we cut to next. And Yama's pushing this narrative about how Emmy would make a great... Uh, what's what's his phrase here? It's like a high class escort. I think is what he said. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, I didn't want to go that far because I thought hell? it was good. Here we are. Oh yeah, in the yeah. beginning of the episode, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's just kind of funny that he's he's pushing that narrative, and everyone else is just kind of like, stop. That's yeah, where she- his mind, like, he sees her like crying over like her career aspirations, and he's just like, she could be an escort. Yeah. <laughs> Has she ever that's considered her, being an escort? It's that's that sensuality career. that is just oozing out, you know. That's mm-hmm. what Yeah, is that like the equivalent of like when people say like fuck it, I'm just going to be a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Take skill, man. Take skill. I mean, it's true. Mm-hmm. Make bad money. So now we get into the Hanaryo section of the episode where it's kind of mostly them, right? Uh they meet up in the kitchen. And they get ready to go and they start driving over to Hakone in Kanagawa where they're going to go hot springing, I guess. Um, while they're in the car, uh, Hana finally reveals the the secret behind that gesture where she's searching for romance. Mm. Um, mm. And I love Rio's response to it. It's like, well, that you've been sitting on that hot goss for like three weeks. <laughs> wow. <like. laughs> yeah, he was less He's sarcastic so in that, but it is like, yeah, it just... It's like, I think, like, who, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> like, he was probably cannot, expecting a lot more. fluster the man. No. Yeah. 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 It's uh, windy as fuck. The, <laughs> they get out of the car and they start walking into the place. Uh, I will say, you, do you guys remember how windy it fucking was? Windy as fuck. Oh, insanely. It's windy. Windy as fuck. White shirt pressed right up against Rio's washboard abs. Like, dude, you could count them through his shirt. <laughs> his shirt was clean as hell. It was scrubbing packs. its. It was scrubbing itself. <laughs> Yeah, was on him. he was cleaning his shirt. The wind was cleaning his shirt for him. Yeah, it didn't seem God. like a good. Maybe that is a good environment to go hot spring in. I guess it's more in, indoors, but yeah, it seemed like pretty bad weather. And uh, yeah, Hana's the bad to, weather is when you want to go hot spring in, right? I so. guess so. But Hana had to decide the eternal question: Do you buy or rent your bathing suit? I feel that's a little unsanitary. Rent well, I mean, they scared clean, or they, they wash them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I would It's a little bit oh, different than renting a suit though or something. Has anyone in this show rented a bathing suit before? I sure haven't. Nope. A yeah. speedo. No. Yeah. You've rented a, a, spe- a long speedo you know, <laughs> butt floss fucking speedo. Yep. Thanks for that visual. Yeah. <laughs> then you return it like here's your butt floss thong. <laughs> Please wash it before someone else rents it. <laughs> Please. <laughs> You, sh- you need to wash this. <laughs> yeah. And they're just like, uh. I promise no. you, yeah. wash it. I didn't fart on this at all. Don't worry about it. Oh, God. I shit you not because I shat on this. <laughs> wash Stop, it. Stop, yeah. guys. Guys. <laughs> does anyone need a stool sample? Why are we talking about anyway, this? Why are we anyway, talking about this was... when, when we can talk about Hana trying on the leopard skin bathing suit? Yo, I was surprised about like one when piece. they said like, oh, you can just like rent one there. I was figuring like there was just going to be like your basic like black one piece in like different mm. sizes the same way. It's like, oh, I just yeah. need to rent bowling shoes or whatever. Right. Nah, they had different types. They had different cuts. They had sexy ones. They had conservative ones. Yeah. And I swear to God, I've seen this scene in an anime, in a romance anime of like, oh yeah, which swimsuit should I buy? And uh, the guy's like, let me see. Let me see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she let decides see, between a ruffled top two piece or a leopard print one piece. And I love how when they when she wears that leopard print, they do that joking like, Stalking each other yeah, in the jungle, wrestler, kind like, of. <laughs> that was so funny. That was so <laughs> funny. But I don't get it the problem with the leopard thing. I mean, bathing suits are such an individual choice. But like, it wasn't like very pro- provocative. I thought the one, the ruffle one, showed more skin. That was a two piece. I just thought the leopard print just suited her. I don't know, maybe with the pink hair or something. I liked it, but I think I it was it. the cl- like speaking as a a, a lady person. Yes. Um, I think it was the word cleavage cleavage was the problem with the leopard print as okay. opposed to a ruffle which nicely covers that area mm, okay. Wow. Okay. the ruffled top it, it won out that's the one she stuck with this was yeah. reminiscent of misaki and burns when they had their bathing suit try oh, out I about moment. That. yeah this, this reminded yeah. me here yeah well but of course for them they were already dating at this point this is still mm-hmm. courtship yes Nick, that's telling as to the vibes going on though yeah and also mm-hmm. here i just want to say i like her natural hair a lot i like it better than when she had the braids i understand cyber goth was the theme but i thought her hair looked cool now yeah Same. absolutely they go to like a bajillion different hot springs within this one place and also this place looks more like a water park at some points yeah it's got a that water on. slide yeah yeah rodeo water slide that fucking tears your shit up and fucking spins you 360 in the air i guess <laughs> like do you really want to like she's trying to relax she's already bruised and like i'm sure that slide probably bruised her more and also this is a dark thing to bring up but like i would be self-conscious going to a water park where you're showing a lot of skin with a girl that's all bruised up next to me you know you're, you're getting some looks like what the hell like turner like what the fuck is this no, she's a pro wrestler. I promise. Just blame the slide. Yeah, that it was, slide it was, was the brutal. slide. It was Even the, slide. the kids were like, yeah. "Oh no!" Yeah, like, I, when she like flipped over. Well, I'd well, be lying kid, if I said I wasn't concerned were, about the bruises. The kids were laughing. I'd like to think they were laughing at Rio for panicking so much when he was going down that slide. Yeah, he went down the smoother. Too. It looked like there were like different levels of rodeo mm. for the slide, and she went down the severe one. It looked like. Yeah, but he he was like not having it. That's probably the most flustered I've heard him. He was like, no, 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 please don't stop. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I get the sense he I get the sense that he's probably not like the big thrill seeking type. He probably is the type that doesn't like roller coasters and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know his enthusiasm at sports events. I wonder. I don't, I don't know. know why. I just think maybe. Well, Either we'll way, in, in this in this whole scene in the hot springs, they go to not just one, but two hot tubs mm. to have conversations. Um, in the first one, we learn about a little bit about Rio's past, where apparently he's he just went through a huge glow up in the past like 10 years because in middle and high school, he went to an all boys school, didn't know how to talk to a girl, couldn't even think about holding her hand, et cetera, et cetera. And now he's like this hot piece of ass kind of guy. <laughs> like <laughs> Objectifying Rio number two. Way to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's it's the point where uh, Hana was like, oh, she uh, she was very surprised. Was like, I almost kind of thought you were a little bit of a womanizer or like you, you were more experienced. Yeah, so Rio right now is, is going to benefit from my wrongness about Ruka earlier this season. 
Because I mm. said that Ruka, I'll bet he's a player. I'll bet he's lying. I'll bet he's not really the shy, bashful guy. This is just his play to get a lot of girls because he looks like a model and da 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 da. Ended up, he is really that guy. He isn't really much of a ladies' man whatsoever. I can dig that. So now Rio is going to benefit. I'm not going to do the same mistake twice. We'll wait and see. But I usually have a level of skepticism with what people say to people to try and date. So. I'm not alone either. The panel kind of wonders if they like you. Know, he's evaluating the best responses to use with with whoever he's talking to one on one. Yeah, so you think we'll he's see. building a narrative? Is the, is that your? I think he's just downplaying his popularity with the ladies. You know, because he knows I, that I that's better to hear. You know, because that's what Hannah's bringing up. She's like, "Oh, you seem like the kind of. Are you the kind of guy that always breaks up with the girl? You mm. know, she's trying to get at. Are you a playboy or not? Right. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. so on, beyond all that too. uh even though we get all this fighting between Hana and Emmy, we really don't get a scene where, at least it's been a minute, where we've gotten a scene where uh, Ryo is asked who he likes. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. We don't really have, we're not really keyed into that. We don't really know exactly where he stands. You know why? Because they're scared to ask. Mm. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're skirting the issue. They don't want to be shut, the door shut in their face quite this early. It's still their, this is their very first date. But she is fishing for little nugs, right? She's like, hey, what do you think of Emika? And then he goes, huh? He was like, kind of like puzzled. And I felt like he felt a little pain in the corner. Like, oh, no. Think about something smart yeah. to say here. Oh, shit. Yeah, because yeah, I think he likes them both. And why wouldn't he? Uh, right, right now at this point in time. So he says, I wonder about her and Ruka. Which is kind of a non-answer. You know? Cause he, um, but um, it's still showing concern. Yeah, he's playing I the field. I thought it was... I th- I thought it was a very indicative answer. I thought it was a super green light for Hana. I think it was like a yeah. Now that you meant you know you mentioned it the other day, and I'm wondering about it. Mm-hmm. Like not to say that like her saying that on the couch was like a malicious like let's plant the seed of doubt. Mm-hmm. But regardless, it does make you wonder. Mm. Rom coms. Yeah, that's rom coms. Rom coms. Rom coms. <laughs> That's where I'm at, is I think that that with Rio saying, I wonder about Ruka and Emmy, that was for Hana to kind of double down on. Yeah, they definitely seem like they're totally an item for sure. Right. You know, mm. and when it's I, I think this is another one of those times where the editors do something right, where in the middle of Hana saying all of this stuff about like, oh, they stay up late at night, they play games together, but they don't go on dates. It's a little weird. We cut to Emmy and Haruka talking mm-hmm. in the girls' room, mm-hmm. and this is where Emmy expresses her concern that I said I li- like previously when all the girls were talking. I said I was interested in Ruka, but now I know for sure it's definitely not a romantic interest. Mm-hmm. But I think Hana's trying to lump us together. Yeah. And then again, at this point, I don't think it was malicious yet because she's trying to help her, like almost enable her. Because from Hana's point of view. Emika said she likes Ruka. And my thought yeah. here is that Emika was Ruka's to lose. And he lost her. <laughs> That's mm. kind of what I thought. I think the window of opportunity was there. And just like it happened or didn't happen with Risiko, it's not happening with Emika because he just can't, mm. he can't, um, you know, mature enough, I guess, and act like a man quick enough for these girls. Mm. I know we just complimented the editing. But I would really like to see some of these moments, like these late night gaming yeah. sessions yeah. or yeah. movies, etc. Like, also, I learned yeah. through this, like the one piece of B-roll evidence that they had of the late night rom-com sessions is that they have DVDs that they have to return. <laughs> yeah, that's still a thing, y'all. Hey, 2011 called. They want their DVDs back. Yeah, I was thinking it was like Redbox type of thing or something. Yeah, I wonder. Um, yeah, so that. In that way, it makes me think of the Rico and Hay- Hayato situation. And that, like, it's not definitely not, like, as scandalous or anything like that. But it's, it's like, it's only being referred to mm. by the housemates. We don't actually see it. Mm. You know? Yeah. I mean, then it becomes a question of, is the is the camera crew around at the time like who's gonna say hey you work at you're working a production on terrace house you have to stay in the house till watch 3 these two catch- yeah who's play mario <laughs> until three in the morning like, like, yeah just yeah, watch them down yeah but it, it <laughs> does do it. it does bring into the conversation the idea that are they consciously doing it when the cameras aren't rolling it's possible I'm sure i mean I'm sure. they're yeah. consciously deciding not to go on dates at least with emika yeah. right also ruka's just true. that night owl 
You know, he's mm. just always been someone that sleeps in like crazy. He just stays up all night because he's no, he's Spider Man. He's not That's... the Night Owl. He's the Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, Night Owl's the Watchman guy. He's the Night Spikes. Spider. Is he uh, Batman? Yep. Uh, he is the Night. What I do want to say in this scene though is I want to praise Haruka in that she's kind of becoming the new Shohei in terms of giving sage advice. Taking that role. Last week she gave pretty good advice to Ruka. This week, it's, I mean, she's echoed what you've said, Jack, about how she thinks Hana's just trying to help. But she also says something along the lines of, this may seem like a small issue now, but if you don't confront it now, it's going to fester and become a monster in this house. And mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just nice to see Haruka actually give good advice. Yeah, well, <laughs> she had that fight in the house, so she doesn't want to see it happen again. No, no. And I think she's been chilling out the last few episodes because she knows she's leaving soon. Yeah, and I'm I'm just I'm kind of curious that she didn't mention it did not come up this episode when she revealed nope. it to Pepe last week. I don't see her changing her mind. So it's got to be coming if it doesn't come next week, that'll be weird. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me wonder like how concrete her plans are. Like if she mm. really really means that or if she's like I guess I would leave then if I if I'm going to leave. Yeah, I would it, leave between these days. Is she yeah. waiting for her to see how the fancy date goes with Pepe? I wonder. Oh, that's probably. a very romantic thing, by the way, guys. Like, oh, we're gonna dress up. We're gonna go on this classy, high class date. We're gonna drop some money. We're gonna get some good drinks, some good food. That's and then Pepe's gonna get turned down. That's totally like a hey, I want, I want to be <laughs> oh, your man Jesus. kind of date. Man, that's mean. Yeah, honestly, I remember last week, uh, at least I expected that date to happen in this episode in 23, yeah, yeah. but I guess not. Mm. I guess I, it better happen in 24, because if it doesn't, oh my shit, God. what if 24 ends in the middle of that date? And it's like ah. bef before Haruko gives an answer of like, I like you or not, Pepe. Man, I Kill fucking me. hate that. Man, you think yeah. so? You think Pepe's going to confess during this date? I guess if they're drinking, I don't know. I, I mean, I what else is he going to do it, you know, because it's either that or he she's moving unless he really gets the sense that she doesn't like him. Yeah, yeah he's got to shoot a shot at that point. And that's Which, like the right. best, you know, set up for that shot. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. basically a Hail Mary. But but you know, if somebody leaves, you know, if he knows that she's going to leave and like you just know what's going to happen, like, I, hey, let's hook up or not hook up. But hey, let's hang out after you leave the house. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. It's got to happen, though. I hope it happens. He just yeah. he just thought he would have more time. Yeah. And now he doesn't. Mm -hmm. And, and all that time manga has been now. taken up. Yeah, he's got to work on his manga. Yeah. Uh, but then the next scene, we have everyone gather together in the first floor. Um, Ryo and Hana come home from their hot springs date. Haruka and Emi come downstairs to have drinks. And Pepe is very excited because he gets to make some Negroni. Negroni, 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 Negroni. Negroni. Some beautiful uh, Italian cocktail. Uh, I've had one before. It's pretty good. I like it. Super it. strong. It wasn't. It it wasn't strong enough to make me say, "Oh, this is strong." But it's definitely like, "Oh yeah, this is a uh, this is the uh, everyone's doing the capiche hand sign." <laughs> <in there right? laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm fighting. Sorry, Kay, hear you over the sound yeah. of my uh my, my Italian, Italian hands, my la yeah. my lobster claws. Yeah. As the only Italian on this podcast, I feel attacked. <laughs> good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Pepe makes uh, alcohol for everyone except for Ryo, because of course Ryo doesn't drink. He gets water, and they do the cheers. Uh, Ryo does like the cheers with like the finger between the the glasses, kind of thing. Weird. I don't know. It was kind of a nice house bonding scene. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that gets a little awkward. Yeah, Emika. Yeah. Comes into the room, or is she already in the room at this point? Yeah. Yeah, she's got the Negroni, and like, oh, you had a bath? Was it private bath? co-bathing like it was just like again the jabs continue here yeah Ooh, and they're sitting right next to each other and also ruka was playing with a harry potter wand and making a mustache out of it in the background hey, that was did, weird did experimenting. he go to universal or like because i would love to see that i want that date <laughs> even if it's just like him and like his grandma or something <laughs> oh my god <laughs> That is, this is the one and only scene we get with Ruka this whole episode. Enjoy it, folks. Dude, so yeah. him, him and like his grandma things. and uh, Yudai and his grandma go on a double date to Universal. Oh, Get God, Harry yeah. Potter wands. There it is. I'd, I'd watch that. 
Yeah, this scene is weird, and it, it did give me this scary uh, thought where there's there's like one shot of Hana where she's like kind of giving Emmy the side eye, and it's a very like, I'm going to murder you kind mm. of side eye. It's not friendly. And I realized like, she doesn't have an outlet anymore. Wrestling is over <laughs> for the time being. She can't get her anger out in the squared circle, so she's going to get it out in the three floor terrace house. Yeah, that look she gave Emmy was scary. The claws was come scary. out. The claws I'll, come out. I'll give her the benefit of the doubt of resting bitch face. We've all done it. <laughs> yeah, I, I have fair. it all the fucking yeah. time. I can't help it. But yeah. but it, it's true that there was like some weird tension throughout this scene, and I don't think the alcohol helped whatsoever. I mm -mm. think it just amplified it. And I love the yeah. people that like weren't quite picking up on it, like. Pepe, the fact that he was like, "Hey, I wanted, I was planning all day. I wanted to make you these drinks," and it's like, "This was not the best night, bruh. This was not the best night." But Ooh. good for you. Can I just say the tension was alleviated for me a little bit because when everyone sipped on the drinks, Hana said, "You know, wow, right? Like Sugoi, right?" Or no, she said, "Wow, actually, like literally that." And I think it was Ryo kind of mocking the way she said it. Right? It was like, "Wow, you got like really loud." And the way yeah. he, the way he mocks her, I swear to God, sounded like Ray Romano saying, "Wow, <laughs> yeah, like Deborah, this Negroni so good. Wow, it, did, it had a weird <laughs> that's, accent. That's too. the vibe wow. I got. <laughs> wow. Wow. wow, and that and that just took me out of all the tension in the scene for me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to share that with the world. <sighs> well, it was wow. Ray Romano who would have dude. Emika, when is she gonna come out and confess? Clearly, she has feelings for Rio. We all know this. I don't know, y'all. It's it's starting to feel like twenty four is going to be a pretty explosive episode. It's building up, man. There is a love yeah. triangle. Clear. Same. Uh, Rio goes up to bed. It's at twelve thirty, right? And this is where Haruka. She's being all like, "Oh, going upstairs." Men looks like it's such a chore. Uh, but uh, Emmy's being like, "Let's go upstairs." Why? Right? He keeps show. What bothered me here is why would Haruka be like, Pepe, come on, let's go, come on. Just to say, okay, thanks for being here. Get scram. Like, what yeah, was it that was about? weird. Yeah, I, yeah, Pepe comes into the room and he's like, wow, there are two staircases up to the top bed. Okay, guys. Like Hina Don. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Yeah, Haruka like asked, like was goading him to come up there. I don't know. It seemed kind of, maybe he thought she was going to flirt with him or something. I don't know. Yeah, but they were clearly a little intoxicated. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I think the the strategy changed mid mid thought. It was like, wait, I can't. If Pepe is here, Pepe go away. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, and they all gather in the girls' room, and then that's when Haruka and Pepe bolt out, um, which conveniently gives Emika and Hana just the girls' room, so Emika can ask, "Hey, can we talk in the playroom for a second? Just a hot, quick second. Why do we gotta move? Yeah, you were yeah. alone in the the room." I don't know. They the didn't the want room is where you had the yeah. hard knocks talk. They didn't want someone to walk in. Yeah, it's about to get real. Oh, it's about to get real. They needed Ooh. the padded floor in case it devolved into wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In yeah. so, case there needed uh, to be a figure four fucking leg lock. I hey, think, nice. in hindsight here, the alcohol was a little bit of a catalyst for this talk to happen. But Emika mm. was planning on doing it, too. It probably just, like social lubricant right to get her to yeah liquid shoot. courage yeah but i don't think that hana's side would have been as, as pointed ah. with, like sans alcohol you don't think so I, mm. not quite i think she she would have made her stance known but i don't think it would have been as pointed without the alcohol well so if we're gonna dive into that scene let's at least set it up right basically uh hana and emika are at a standstill here Emmy's assertion is that I can hang out with a guy and we can just be friends and it doesn't have to mean anything romantic can or will happen. We can just be platonic friends. Facts. Hana's assertion is if you're going to co-nap with someone, if you're going to watch rom-coms with someone, stay up till 3 a.m. playing video games with someone, there has to be something there. And especially since it's a guy and we're going to be very heteronormative here. You have to have you have to be into him or there has to be something romantic going on. And if you and if you're going to get mad at someone for interpreting that, you're in the wrong. Mm. Fight. Mm. So. Yes, guys and girls should can and should absolutely be friends. And that's totally allowed. But 
if Emmy is like really insisting like, hey, there's like, I don't have feelings for him. Then like, she doesn't have fucking feelings for him. Done. End of story. Take like take people at their word. Yeah, it's it's like, like, like she's like, I don't know how else to explain this to you. Like, I don't have feelings for him. And but, if but, we're not. But it's two people involved here, too. Ruka clearly has feelings for her. At this right, phase. Right. Yeah. And that's a different conversation. It's like, OK, so then we get into the conversation of like, is she leading him on and yada, yada, yada. Um, but she's telling in this conversation, she's telling ha- Hannah, like, hey, like, I do not like Ruka. And we're just we're just hanging out to hang out. It's not like they, they, they that is true, though, that they are not like explicitly going out on dates, hanging outside of the house, having conversations about feelings. Like I, like, like I said, <laughs> this would all be well and good if if uh, Hana didn't bring this up in front of Rio. That's the problem here is they're not being transparent. And also remember this, that their uh, their uh, communication has suffered here because I can't remember the scene that Hana said it, but she did say very explicitly Oh, it was in the t- hot tub with Rio when they were like, oh, I wonder what's going on with um, Emika and Ruka. And she was like, I feel like I'm not allowed to ask. That's a very significant line there. There's no- They don't have that trust. They don't have that communication. And so she has to, because she can't talk about it with her, they're not that close. She has to just infer. And the actions speak louder than words kind of adage comes up here. So... I don't necessarily think that Hana's like wrong in what she's doing because she doesn't know that 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 Emika likes Rio at all at this phase. Yeah, she just wants a long time with him. And Hana just wants a long time with Rio, basically. There's a huge lack of communication here as to where everyone's priorities lie, and I think um, you know Hana points out that you know she's like, oh well, you know maybe this is just like my lack of experience speaking, and I think that does contribute to it. But simultaneously, I think that Emmy would have done better to be like, I also like Rio totally. or I or have not gone ahead and said like, oh, I'm totally interested in Ruka, maybe um, because it's like you're going to take that kernel and run with it. Like, this is the information I have about their relationship and the evidence suggests that everything about that statement is correct. Like, there's evidence to support that. But right, but but Emmy's kind of backed into a corner where she can't say that she likes Rio because of how vocal Hana has been about how much she likes Rio. I mean, Emika is being evasive with that information. She doesn't want her to know. But I mean, I think that it just needs. I mean, that's would have been Hansan's advice. He's always like, "Hey, just be upfront. Just state it. Make it clear. Don't be ambiguous." Because now we're seeing the fallout of Emika just not being honest with their feelings, maybe even to herself. And then, but she did drop the hint to Hadika that maybe I do have feelings for him. To me, it's pretty clear they have a lot. They've had chemistry for weeks and weeks and weeks here. You know? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I just think that it's it's the it's the girls here, Emika and Hana, that just again have that broken communication or non-existent communication, which is why we are here. And it might not get any better. It might get a lot worse before it gets better. Yeah, I think they just. They did a bad job at communicating and they just let things fester. But I think it was already in some sense clear to uh, Hana that Emmy did like Rio because, I mean, she did the whole thing. She was wearing the T-shirt and she was like talking about how hot he is and yada, yada, yada. Um, and then she tried to push back on that by uh, even in this episode where she was picking the extensions out of her hair and telling her like go go to her on and be like, yeah, he's so hot, isn't he? Yeah, he's definitely good looking like yeah, as... Yeah. Hana was talking about yeah. Rio. And so it was almost like she was encouraging him. And so now we have this thing where it feels like to me, Hana is trying to shove Emmy into this, into this hole with, with Ruka so she can have Rio to herself, <clears throat> even though she, I think she, to some notion knows that she does like Rio and she's like, Hey, like I'm trying to push you out of the way so I, I can have Rio. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that like black and white, like, I'm pushing you here because I know you like him. I think it's it's an unsaid. That's the whole problem. That's the whole point of this is right, they're not right, communicating. Right. She has a she definitely has a suspicion, but like to say that Hana knows that she likes him when when Ruk when um Emika said, "Hey, I got feel I think I have feelings for Ruka." Like it's that's the thing. It's just they're not communicating. That's what we keep coming back to. You know, so right, I just, right, I just right. don't think at this phase yet it was um malicious on Hana's part. Yeah, I think she was trying to help her get yeah. with the guy that she thought that Emika liked. Yeah. 
I feel bad for Ruka and all this, but like, and because like, no, yeah, yeah. I don't like Ruka. I right. could never like Ruka. I don't like him like that. How dare you uh, accuse me of liking Ruka like that? Like yeah. it's an embarrassment. It's like, Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. It isn't kind yeah. of though, right? Maybe, maybe she, something happened, I wonder, off camera, because we were all so impressed by Emika's, like, I don't want to say low bar, but low bar <laughs> when it came to, like, she was willing to forgive the weird drawings in Spider-Man, etc., and still be like, oh, I think I might like Ruka. Like, did something happen that she was like, oh, this is why people think you're weird. I, I Never think, mind. Yeah, I think it's what didn't happen. Like I said, I think the fruit was right for the picking there for a window of time. Ruka let it go on too long. Missed his window of opportunity. Doesn't know how to read the room. And mm. that's what it is. He's not, he's, he was one of the passive boys. And he's still a passive boy. Passive boy. That's what it comes passive down to. Passive boys. So he, he, it was his, he was, she was his to lose. Is my theory. And I'm so glad you said the word passive, Jack. I because I think this argument, I think it's fair to call this an argument. It wasn't a discussion, nor was it an open dialogue. It was tense. Um it was a problem with the fact that Emika is too passive aggressive, mm. whereas Hana is too aggressive. Dude, Hana's and, I see maybe it was alcohol, maybe not, but I'm Hana is a fighter. Okay, she yeah. is a fighter. And she, I actually kind of liked how she didn't back down when she was confronted here. She, she kind of like elevated the situation, in fact. And maybe that's not the best advice I would give to somebody, but it's like she also wasn't being, letting Emika push her around either. Right, but that's the problem you run into with these situations. Where sure, I think it's fine to fight for what you believe in, right? But I don't think this is one of those scenarios. This is one of those scenarios where they should have sat down and had an understanding, a meeting of the minds, right? Because very clearly there is a difference in viewpoint, right? In the way they see the world. Hana grew up in this world where if you talk to a boy, it's because you like them, end of story, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Emmy clearly grew up in this world where you can talk to a boy and sleep that's with fine, them. they can be a friend. Yeah, you can, you well, coast, yeah, you can sleep, sleep with them. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the thing uh, here is that Emika, one of the questions that she asked Hana was like, are you under the impression that I like Ruka? Like, uh, yeah. Because you said so. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Am I under the impression? That bothered me. Yeah. I mean, that's just yeah. that's just where she's at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She just should have been more forthcoming. Mm -hmm. What well, what she we needed like, to happen? Read the lines, and Hana's just like, I can't read. Yeah. So I guess <laughs> yeah. Emika now her end game is she wants to do all the things she wants to with Ruka, and she wants to like Rio. Which, hey, I'm not sitting there telling her not to do that, but. I guess Hana's just argument is like, well, don't be surprised when people think you like each other. I don't think that's a big yeah. ask either, you know? I mean, I don't think that's a big ask, but my my main thing here, and this is why I think I kind of side with Emika in this situation, is that it seemed like Emika was at least trying to find some sense of understanding, like trying to build a bridge to Hana. But Hana yeah, was just yeah. throwing fireballs at that bridge, saying like, fuck that, you're wrong. If you're going to hang out with Ruka, you have to like him. End of story. Maybe I don't understand you because I'm inexperienced, but I'm also now aggressive and refuse to understand you. <laughs> yeah. That's the yes. vibe that she was giving off, right? Is that like, it's fine that you're inexperienced. We can't all be experienced with every facet of humanity because every human's fucking weird, right? But if you then blame your misunderstanding of other humans on your inexperience and then refuse to get over that hurdle, you're forcing yourself to be willfully ignorant of well, learning anything. When she states that, like, hey, maybe this is just my mis like my inexperience, that come they came across as scapegoating to me. Yeah. Like she was she was using that as a scapegoat in the conversation to be like, yeah, well, uh the reason why I'm being so aggressive is because of my inexperience. And it's like, no, you're just I mean, you're calling her out. I mean, you're the one who escalated this conversation in the first place. And then yeah. you're going to turn it back and be like, this is just my inexperience. Sorry, sorry for escalating it, but I'm not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. You know. Yeah, and that's that's mm. what I think bothered me the most about Girl Fight Part 2 is that they end this conversation with Emmy says, like, okay, cool, I've got nothing more to say. And Hana's like, are you sure? And Emmy, of course, being passive aggressive, like, yeah, I'm absolutely sure I have nothing else to say. She does. 100% she does. She's still bothered. Oh, yeah. We're, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she kept, she kept pushing the issue with Hana, and then Hana goes, well, didn't I already say that I get it? You don't like Ruka. Like, that was kind of what, okay, finally, like, let's drop it. Exactly, though. That, that when Hana was saying, I understand you, she fucking doesn't understand shit. They just want like, it to be over. On. Exactly. Because it's not like going anywhere. You, 
Yeah, when you say something like I understand you in that aggressive of a tone, no, you don't. You just have yeah. sealed the deal of we're not ever going to be good friends. Yeah, I, unless they have it I don't want that. I said this before. I said that they're getting along, they're shopping for loungewear, and they're going to let a dude get in between them, and that's what's happening. And I just think it's yeah. because they don't have good communication. Emika's giving out maybe outdated information or whatever. It's just it's not good here, and I think it is going to get worse. Because yes. the way this episode ends, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, brutal. I, mm. So what I will say is the way this should have went down is this should have been similar to what happened between Noah and Shohei and OND with Sena. And not there was still like didn't end necessarily pretty, but at the at the same time, at the very least, they confess that they both like Santa and they're like what the best man win I want to go around the table daily you're first who mm-hmm. is Hana calling Ghostbusters no um <laughs> Rio Rio absolutely Rio what I think that's what you think she's called so she's gonna be like hey I just had this talk Emika's a bitch let's let's date no I think that she's like Maybe like okay, like I need to confess. I need to lock this down. Interesting mm-hmm. theory. Okay, mm-hmm. I'll go second, and then I want to hear your guys too. Here, I think she's calling fucking Ruka <laughs> to the room. Ooh. That's what I think is happening. I think Ruka's gonna show up, and I think she's gonna be like, "Hey, Emika, like spill the tea. Like Emika doesn't like you, dude." That's what I think is gonna happen. I or, hope that happens. Or like. Put him in a headlock and be like, tell me everything you've done together. <laughs> Has it been coupley yeah. things? Oh, Are you guys shit. doing coupley things? What if they've kissed off camera? Oh, that'd be too good. Ooh. I don't know. All right. Go ahead, Colin. Ooh. Next. Who is she calling? And it's okay. You don't have to pick someone different if you agree with one of us. Now nah, you're, you're, I mean, God, you're kind of swaying me. Um, I could see, I could see it being a confrontation with Ruka because that kind of makes sense in my head where. She does sit down and be like, okay. She wants to well, verify. Yeah. So Emika is sitting there telling like, so she's saying to Ruka, Emika is sitting here telling me that she doesn't like you, but I saw you guys do A, B, and C. So like, what's the deal? Do you still like her? I'm trying to figure I this out. I thought you should know because I know you like her. Oh. Yeah. Something like that. I, I think if she's calling, I'm like, why would she call Rio though? Like, why would she call Rio? To, like, to, to nail him down. Confess. Theory. Yeah, to, to seal the yeah, deal. I, I, but knowing knowing how Hana has been so far, I don't feel like that's likely. She's more in the confrontation mood at this point. The I don't think she's going to. Exactly. No, it, yeah. The flame is hot right now. <laughs> she wants to win. I think she's incredible. I've gotten this from her wrestling, and now the way she's reacting in this room, she's very competitive, and she's very driven. And, like, we didn't so see the so side of her yet. She, so, yeah, she's just, like, liquid courage, too, on top of all that. She's, I, fuck it. I don't think the alcohol Yo. has much to do with it. I think it's really in her. I think it's really in her. Maybe it helps oh, yeah, a little bit. Absolutely. I don't think I don't think that she's just getting on the phone and calling someone because of alcohol. No. She seems pretty straight to me in this whole scene. But interesting. Yeah. But so wait, so you think it's Ruka? I'm leaning I'm leaning Ruka. Who yeah. do you think, Robert? So I'm leaning toward two different options. Mm. One, it's a guest star we are not expecting. Rui Hashimura. E. <laughs> Or Sena, maybe, to just kind of come in and, like, shit's being kicked up. Let's have Sena just kick it up even more. Okay, who's she really calling, though? Uh, that or the hired assassin that she has asked to kill Emika. Okay, so you don't have a theory is what you're saying. <laughs> no. I mean, my closest theory is I think she's going to call either Haruka or Pepe to try and get a, mm. uh, a like, a more neutral third party, like, hey, what Am do I you crazy? think about all this? Am I the only one yeah, that thinks I, this about Emka? Am I being the crazy one, right? Mm. Although I don't mm-hmm. think she's going to ask that. I think she's too. She thinks she's too in the right to ask that question. Mm. Yeah, I think it's um, Ruka. Yeah, it's just I. The only problem with that theory is I think uh, I don't think she's thinking clearly enough right now to be smart enough to say, "Let's back off. Let's have a neutral third party. Let's assess this situation." Mm-hmm. You know, I think she's. Yeah. Uh, She's looking for fisticuffs. I think she, her bullshit alarm is just going off. Roo, roo, roo. And because walking out like, fuck this. If you're going to bullshit me, I'm going to get to the source of the information. Mm. Man, that would be good, though. 
Ooh, I hope it's Ruka. If when we watch this episode, if it's Ruka, I'm gonna fucking scream. Cause it's gonna get fucking saucy. Spicy. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Lucky what if it's yeah. Konami? What if it is Konami? Like, hey, so me and <laughs> you, right? She shows up. Yeah. In, in like three hours when she goes to sleep, we're gonna go in there, we're just gonna choke a bitch. <laughs> that or like, I need the I need to beat the shit out of someone. Can you come to the playroom, please? I need to get this Ooh. aggression out. Ooh. Oh, so she's yeah, just gonna exactly. hire to to slam her a couple times. You gonna bring her? In the yeah, house? okay. <laughs> yeah, she's just like step on me. Yes. Wow. Okay. If uh, really, huh? What if, what if it's the the gardener guy? Is it was it Kojima son? Kojima, Kojima and Konami together at last. Yes. Oh, <laughs> just come the in, reunion. It's like, hey, what's the issue? God. So Silent Hill <laughs> the remake. Is being watched. Okay. Man, if you are not a gamer, you must be very lost, and I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. You see Kojima? No, just kidding. No. Yeah. yeah let's Hour go long that. tangent. So here yeah, is the entire not, history of Konami. I can't wait. I can't wait. This is such a cliffhanger. This is such torture doing the show sometimes when these cliffhangers happen because we've complained many a time that we are actually, you know, watching these week by week. So it's like, I cannot wait to watch 24. It's, I don't blame anyone for binging straight to 24 after this cliffhanger. It's brutal. Oh, yeah. If I, if I weren't doing the show, I'd oh. straight, like, load straight into the next yeah, like episode. Freaking months like, ago, man. Yeah. Ugh. But I think that wraps up our discussion of episode 23, Hi. right? As we get ready to watch the last episode of part two, episode 24, Pink Rose. Hmm. Pink, Terrifying. Name. Pink scene. Ooh. Maybe again. Uh, maybe oh. that's the... Maybe all the anger and frustration turns into like angry making out. <laughs> ah, I see. Uh, I can be down with that. <laughs> but we've got some fucking bones to grind next. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking of aggression, yeah. let's just fucking stay mad till the end of the episode. <sighs> uh, we have updates here for you for uh, the first round of our Terrace House Deathmatch Panic. We know you Death want match them. Panic. We know you want them. This was a fucking bloodbath. You fuckers are savage. We abstain from well, voting. Not, let's not call our fans fuckers. They hey, fucking, man. I mean, to get to be fair, we gave you guys incredibly hard matchups in the beginning. Who would have known they could have gotten this brutal? But it was a bloodbath. And um, some of our faves are, well, we'll talk about the results now, I guess. Yeah. Um, I guess just for context, this is the first episode of our show you're listening to. Uh, last week, we started, we kicked off a thing called Terrace House Deathmatch Panic, where we've taken 32 people that have been in Terrace House, put them in a tournament in a bracketed tournament for the month of march for no reason march madness um, uh, no, no, uh, dude, no 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 talking about what cut <laughs> scrub that from the record this is hey, uh, we need another take yeah third <laughs> month of the year complete sanity bracket complete has nothing to do sanity. with basketball even though there's a basketball player in it that's it. Yes. Wait, what's um, basketball? Yeah, exactly. And we we opened up voting to everyone via a Google form. Uh, and honestly, the response has been kind of incredible. Uh, I don't think yeah. any of us expected. No, you guys blew us away. Time. We were from based on what the response we were expecting to get to how many of you all turned out for this Terrace House Deathmatch panic. Like, good loud. There's a lot of y'all yes. out there. And thank you. And this is even more fun as a result. So we know you guys can't wait for the results. So let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. Match number one, we had Makoto Hasegawa versus Mizuki Shida, from, both from BGITC. Yes. And the winner, by a whopping 76 to 23%, is Mizuki. Mizuki won. She beat Makoto's ass. It wasn't that close. It was basically three to one. And yeah, so Mizuki got shafted. Wait. No, she won. Wait, wait. Makoto <laughs> got shafted. Yeah. No, no, Mizuki got shafted in the show. In the show, got it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> this she is her revenge. Yeah. She got a revenge. Her revenge. revenge. And I said Makoto's up and coming is up and coming, and it up and came. All right. In in our fantasies. Yes. Yes. Those words, in that order. Yep. <laughs> Daily, do you want to reveal the, the results yeah. of the next matchup? All right, this was hard, y'all. This was so difficult. Match Ooh. number two was Armon Bitteraf versus Hana Kimura. And even though we just talked about, you know, Hana kicking ass, Armon won. Armand, yeah. the visual in my head of Armand punching a woman in the face is very disturbing. And I don't, I don't like think that's going to happen. I don't think that would no. happen. But he but y'all chose the death match. More he, so, he more so, her. no head movement, doggy paddle. That's what I picture. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, yes. I think that uh, through Hana off her groove, it's like she uses the head to kind of figure out where he's going next, but his head doesn't <laughs> move. So <laughs> she doesn't know where he's going next. That's what if what, she, happened. what if she called Armand into the playroom? Yo. Wow. Oh, we, man. Have to have a cameo. we really predicted this. Yeah. 
So, <laughs> Armand, boy. congrats. Hana, you were short-lived in this. We'll see if anyone else from uh, Tokyo makes it to round two. But uh, I guess, Colin, go ahead with number three, man. Number three, we have Hikaru Ota versus Pepe Dorato. Uh, Pepe takes it 74.4% versus 25.6% for Hikaru. Uh, <sighs> was there ever any... Doubt what? Yes, this is people voting their hearts here. The construction oh. boy beating Pepe's ass. I don't, I don't think so. In real I life. mean, Pe- Pepe, come on. Pepe is, Pepe's the homie. He is the well, homie so now. Pe- Pepe does draw Goku a lot. So maybe uh. the Saiyan, the Saiyan energy is kind of manifested itself you know Mm -hmm. he did a he did a spirit bomb with all of his readers energy Mm. before we go too far we should now mention then you know as you can extrapolate from this data we're pulling if for round two the matchup is going to be mizuki versus armand now what the fuck (laughs) yeah and pepe versus who jack well didn't well real quick didn't armand reject mizuki or am i misremembering that Armand rejected Mizuki. Yeah, so yes. she's going against the two guys oh. that rejected her in a row. Oh, round two. Ooh. Okay. Uh, round four now. So Pepe is going to face off against one very awesome Yuto Hansan Honda who defeated Risako Tanabe. Wow. Risako is a favorite. This is the uh, Tokyo T20 Risako, right? Yes. yes. Hardcore, hardcore, hardcore. Yes. But Yuto <laughs> Honda Hansan, he pulled it out. And uh, yeah, so now it's going to be fucking Hansan versus Pepe. What the hell? <laughs> the, two, oh, the two smart people, the two dude. intelligent, cerebral uh, people. Pepe was getting compared one. to Hansan by all three a few weeks back. And here we are. Holy shit. This is here it. Here we are. Wow. And by the way, there's no way we could plan this because you guys voted for these people. So you, this is your doing. Yeah, we haven't voted no. at all. No. To my knowledge. Nope. We. If you doubt us, we can throw up screenshots if you really need no, it. No, no. I restrain uh, myself. They believe us. Same. Okay. Uh, for the fifth match here, we had Kaito Nakata versus Yuki Burns. One skate boy and one crumpy boy. Ooh. And it looks like the crump has won it the out. Crump. He has crumped so hard that he broke Kaito's board. <laughs> Yuki Burns has taken the victory uh, for, with 62% for of the vote. He crumped that board in half. And shout out to uh, Zumbi in our Discord uh, for also being an awesome mod and for putting up that hilarious, the crumpening um, meme in there. It was very, very oh, popular. The crumpening. Yeah, yes. it's, crumpening. It's like a Smash character intro screen, but it's yeah. like Yuki Burns, the crumpening. He looks intense too. Crumpening. Like, join our Discord if you want to see that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Oh, match man, this six, next y'all, match was Yuki so. Smash. Close. It was so close. Um, we had Shion Okamoto versus Taishi Takamaki. Oh. Uh, ta- Tamaki, Tamaki, sorry. Um, but before and... you say the results, say mm. how close this was. Say the percentages first. Okay. Okay. We had the winning percentage is 51.1% versus <sighs> 48.9%. Fucking, you're talking about like such a small number. Yeah. Y'all, this Shion won. Oh my god. She on one. This this the, the percentages were so close in the, the pie samurai? chart. Yeah, the guiltiest. It samurai. was so close the, in the pie chart. It, it almost looks like the Pepsi logo. Razor thin kind of margins here, guys. <laughs> I'm telling you, you, you think your votes don't matter? They fucking matter. And this was razor thin. And I thought, shout out to Reddit, by the way, as well, to one of the funniest um comments I read in a long time. Someone said that when Shion was studying tomboys, Taishi was studying the blade. I, but that didn't help no. him because he still got just barely dunked on. I guess he should have. Yeah, I guess he should have uh, uh, studied harder. But oh my gosh, Shion is going up next now, and he's gonna face it's uh, Yuki, right? Burns. Yeah, Cr- Crump <laughs> versus model. Oh my god, hilarious. Okay, is you it my serious? turn next? I think it's my turn. Okay. Next. Yeah. So with the absolute bloodbath, ninety point eight percent. Versus 9.2%. Subasa Sato takes it over Sherry Lavo- Lav- Lavoie. Yeah, good luck saying that last minute. Lavoie. Yeah. Uh, um, there's an E on the end. Sub- but yeah, I mean, th- this is, uh, to me, this is kind of a no-brainer. Um, Subasa Sato being the absolute just 
big favorite from OND against Sherry, who was probably one of the most hated from Aloha She's State. a world-class yeah. athlete, and I guess people voted. I mean, you'd be justified either way, I think, here, because Sherry's very underhanded. She probably employs some really uh, dark tactics to win this, but <laughs> I guess, you know, the vast majority of y'all voted Tsubasa in. So that means that not for next round, but perhaps the way you guys vote in a round or two in the future, you could potentially have a tsubasa Shion matchup to the death. <gasps> See, I I wanted to say that, but I was also worried about planting that seed because if we plant that seed, hey, now everyone's going to be like, we're not stuck in now we're coloring hey, their opinion. I'm just saying it's 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 up in the air. It's an option that we let the community decide. Whoever y'all, if you all want that dark shit, you can have it. It's still on the table. Uh, where are we at? Number eight right now. Uh, okay, so mm -hmm. fucking one of the ones that got commented on the most is the hardest decision. Some people literally said the hardest decision in their life, and a lot of people had to um, flip a coin for this one. But it was Sena. Shimbukuro versus Guy mm -hmm. Sato, and this was super close. The results were not as close as the Shion Taishi one, but it was 46% to 54% in favor of Sanasan. Sanasan, you are advancing to round two. Guy, we barely knew ye. Pooh Bear, we're sorry, but you are dead now. See, I think if I had to guess what happened here, Sana walked in and just said, hug me, hug right? Me, and then uh, <laughs> guy falls into the trap and then she fucking German suplexes his ass into the ground. Dude, I just, <laughs> see, I just see her like strapping him down, putting a, uh, a towel over his face and just like waterboarding him with wine bottle after wine bottle. Uh-huh. That's the way Jesus. this goes. <laughs> As she does the sideways <laughs> aerating thing. Oh God, yeah. Swirling that shit. Uh, Match number nine, we had Masako Endo from BGITC versus Yui Tanaka, the list maker of OND. Uh, Masako pulled out with 63.6% uh, .6 of the vote. Mm. She won this fight. No matter how many pieces of paper Yui wrote upon, it wasn't enough to wasn't topple enough. Masako's Genki energy. Death by a thousand Yui paper cuts. Yui the shit stirrer Tanaka. Yeah, maybe Armand taught uh, Masako some good shit. So she pulled it out. Maybe a thing or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then match number ten. This was this was not super close. Y'all loved him. We love him, and we kind of hate the other guys. So we had <laughs> uh, Masao Wada versus Hayato Terashima, and of course Masao Masao won it. Yeah, he he broke the base over Hayato's high school girl loving head. Fine. Yeah. Yikes. He also he threw it. He's like, here, taste this hot curry. Fine. And he's like, yeah, your curry's way better than you, the chef, can never make. Finally though, I think, you know, I think if you vote for your heart, you're voting Masao here, but also like I think just practically, I think most people would say Masao would beat Hayato's ass in real life. So not surprised here it was three to one basically with voting in Masao's favor. Guys, now I really want curry. Uh same. I might same. have to get some korma here after this. Yeah. After this. After this next matchup, n match number 11, we have Riko Nagai versus Natsumi Saito. Uh, Natsumi takes it over Riko Nagai, 76.3% versus 23.77%. I wonder how Fuyumi would have did. Or done. I Maybe I that, was, that is. She's that the was summon. It. The Super Saiyan form. Ah. The that's transformation. Put it over the top. Yeah, so what so just to review here in round two, we're gonna have Subasa versus fucking Sena. <laughs> Holy shit. That's gonna be wild. Is that right? And then we're gonna have um uh Masako versus fucking Masao. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, that's gonna be a weird one. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all thought round one was bad. Out. Round two is fucking brutal. Okay, are we on? I wanna point out too. Both Hayato and Rico lost in their respective rounds, so that that cursed couple is just out. Ooh, the cursed ooh. couple. The cursed. So couple. okay, so um, Colin just said number eleven, which is um, Natsumi and Fuyumi. Both of them uh, beat Rico, that, yes. and now they're going mm -hmm. to face off against winning with seventy point six percent of the vote, Lauren Sai over Yuki Adashi. So this is fucking. Is this Fuyumi versus Lauren Sai? Holy shit. Oh, that's gonna be terrifying! Wow, Yuki's tap shoes couldn't save him. Wow, yeah, Yuki not against couldn't. Lauren size mutant powers. I don't know which one she has, but I know she has one of them from Legion. Yeah, Yuki's way yeah. shorter than Lauren too. She's just got the lever. She's got the reach advantage, right? Mm. Yeah, damn. Okay, for match thirteen. Oh man, this was a rough one. Uh, <laughs> I swear mm. to you, we didn't plan this. This is oh. just how the 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 sand rolled out. 
we had Ryo Tawatari, the big base base basketball boy, versus friend of the show, friend of the show, Yusuke Eden Kai, Aizawa. And the winner of this match was, unfortunately, maybe or maybe fortunately, maybe what you expected. Ryo wins the match with fifty seven percent of the votes. Uh, I'm going to executive order and cook the books here and just put uh, Yusuke in no. front of the show up front. <laughs> oh, I'm, just you, I'm just being transparent. Yeah, we have just to be transparent. Fair. I, I can't let front of the show go down like that. It's, it's rough, guys. Oh, oh, man. Who did this? Hold on. Or we could do we could do a losers bracket. <laughs> which double elimin- make all the more double elimination. Double <laughs> elimination. It's a death match. <laughs> double elimination. Death. <laughs> he's, match. he's dead. He's I was only dead. dead. Yes. Yeah. It's Mortal Kombat now. And Yusuke is voting in this, and he might be listening here. Yusuke, what's up, man? So he did hey. vote. Yeah. Well, don't worry, Yusuke. We still love you, no matter what anyone Please says. Please still be our you friend. You win. Yes. You win in our hearts. Yes. In our yeah. hearts. Please. So match fourteen. I I guess I didn't know if this was gonna be like super close or not, but it wasn't at all. The winner had eighty four percent over like fifteen percent. This was Yudai Arai versus Ruka Nishinori Noiri, and. <laughs> I guess the the Spider Man powers won out because Ruka won this one, guys. Dude, what is that? <laughs> that is n- clock. That is so not what would actually go down. I just think you guys got that fucking psycho factor in him. You know, they, I just think he would. Just, and Ru- <laughs> you guys just a psychopath, and I just think Ruka is like harmless. <laughs> you die now. Yeah, you will die. Yeah. So, oh, oh my god. Well, I think people voted their hearts it. there, but hey, do it. Do what you will. Do what you want. So what does that mean now? That means that in round two, it's going to be fucking Rio versus Ruka. Versus Ruka. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, no. Our, our fantasy that, matchup is happening. <laughs> that has some implications to our Ooh. to our ship that we mentioned today yeah. in this episode. Yeah, they're going to fucking fight over Emika, I guess. Or I One guess, of them must know. die. Wow. One <laughs> will fucking die. I think, yeah, I think Rio's just going to smother uh, Ruka with his abs. And it's going to be over. Like the end of, uh, like Gladiator. Yes. Just grate his face onto his abs. <laughs> oh. Okay, so um, with that then being said, where are we at, guys? 15? We're at match 15. Okay, okay. That's me. second to last one yeah. here. Go ahead, Colin. All righty. So for match 15, close one, pretty close one. Takuyuki Nakamura Taka san, Takasan. Taka Haruka. Bro. Yeah, Taka bro. Uh, Haruka Okuyama. So Takayuki takes it. Our boy Taka takes it. Fifty four point nine percent versus forty five point one percent for Haruka. Kind of close there. The V eight couldn't save her. Couldn't mm. couldn't save nope. her. Yeah. I mean, does, despite Taka Takasan's uh, mustache shaving thing that happened in OND, he was too slippery. Uh, That's what himself. happened. He had the aerodynamics with his mustache. Uh, yeah, the uh, aerodynamics. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And the snowboard, it's just, it's much faster than a car. Giant think about fist it. of the mustache hair, he, he wins out. And he also hit her with a snowboard or something, I don't know. Oh, man, so <laughs> bye-bye, Haruka. It was fun. And yeah. maybe bye-bye in Tara's house here soon, too, coincidentally. Yeah, True. Okay, so Taka now is going to face the winner uh, with 53.1% of the vote, Ayo Fukuda, who beat out Sota Kono. I was thinking that Soto Soda would come in and maybe use his um, wife and kid that he abandoned as human shields in this mm. fight. Oh my god. <laughs> One in each That's hand. Dark. <laughs> Dude. By the way, just saying, I've got a wife and kids that are right here. Beat them up. But uh, I O. No, I'm sorry for that joke. But, got a divorce. <laughs> but I O, uh, you know, I guess he's got the reach advantage too. He's pretty tall. He's pretty uh, gullible. It's pretty easy to um, uh, convince him. Of doing things, he's got the soccer kick. He's got that, yeah, that soccer kick. Kick a ball and mm-hmm. uh, so does balls. <laughs> so uh, yes. it's gonna be so, uh, it's gonna be Taka versus Io, which I think this will be like I don't know. I think I, I'm going. I don't know. It's hard to call actually. Kind of tough to think yeah. about. I mean, hey, a lot of these were hard to call. A lot yeah. of these are honestly surprises for me. That is, I, round don't, yeah, I don't blame anyone if they were torn. Seriously, round two is going to be even deadlier. We need you guys to vote. The link is live now on our Twitter. It's live on our, we're going to post a Reddit soon as well too. So look out for that. And we'll also put something out on Instagram, but we need your votes for round two. Let's get this done. Get your votes in. And I think also we're going to put up a blank uh, uh, bracket as well too, for you guys to fill out your own kind of fantasy version of that as well too. So look out for that. Right. Yeah. That'll, that'll be online as well. If you want to, kind of place your bets right uh but if you also want early access to the link you can join our discord we'll post it a day early yes mm-hmm. uh-huh. we'll nudge discord exclusive for a day indeed benefits. there it is there are always benefits in our discord yes uh we're all friends too 
Do the math. Nudes. Mm -hmm. Benefits <laughs> with friends. We post. We also have we have, we have the good memes that you aren't going to see on Reddit. We post the nudes, y'all. They're posting nudes on our Discord. Pictures of noodles. Mm -hmm. That is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. With that, let's close out our episode, shall hey, we? It's, hey. been a, it's been a long one. Do it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, theories, anyone that you were mad about losing in the, the deathmatch panic, you can email any and all of those things. It was at questions at terracehousepodcast.com. Uh, we always appreciate your support, uh, whether you listen to our super long episodes or if you follow us on Twitter, etc. That means the world to us. But uh, if you want to help us financially, we do have a buy me a coffee link down below. Uh, any little bit helps, of course, but... You know, it's just if you if you really like what we do, it's it's a good way to kind of support us. Thanks for our, your support, everybody. Thanks for the coffee; it's delicious. Hi, Thank three you. shots uh, of espresso, please. Well, we can't be demanding. Coffee. Yeah, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> we here. Can't, I'll take. The, we can't be entitled. Uh, I'll take the bar slash choosing beggars. I'll take the black coffee; it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you can catch us next Tuesday, where we're finally going to close out part two. It's a big Dun -dun. event. It's a big event. Are we going to tell people what to expect, or are they going to leave them in suspense? Or maybe we'll just dun, leave it at dun. that because now they know there's Hello? something happening, Mush, but mushy? they don't know what. Does hey, it... can you come to the playroom real quick? Yeah, there's another episode. That's what they can expect. This has been Tadaima. Thanks for listening. Itakimas. <laughs>we hope you enjoyed our show. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to ding that bell to receive notifications when we publish brand new content. Follow us on social media and check out our brand new Discord server, linked in the description below.